Hi there, I'm Laura here from Get Organized HQ and obviously I love organizing. I talk about it a lot. I believe that it can help bring us a lot of peace and alleviate a lot of stress, all for that. But there are actually times when I think organizing should just take a back seat and should not be a priority and I'm gonna talk about that today. And really, I haven't talked about this much at all on this channel, but I'm gonna share my personal story about how organizing and really just home management has had to take a back seat for me personally. Okay, so this one, this video is just gonna be, I'll be honest, a little bit different than most of mine. I don't have like a, a great script or an outline. Like I'm just sharing from my heart, my own story. And I think that I'm hoping that you find a lot of like help and inspiration in it and to realize that you're not alone. Uh, so that's what I'm going for here. So let's just imagine that you're sitting across from me and we're having coffee together. Now, I don't even like coffee, so for me, it's hot chocolate. You can have coffee or tea or whatever you want, and we're just having a little chat together. So in most people's lives, there's a lot of life changes that happen, and sometimes keeping your house in order just cannot be the priority. Like, for example, you know, after you have a new baby, like things are changing a lot and you've got to prioritize caring for them and there's a lot of changes. So that's probably not the time that you want to go alphabetize all your spices and focus on keeping the house spotless. Or after a move, moves are incredibly unsettling and you know it's going to take you a while to get settled in after a move. Some people after major job changes, after major losses, um, just personal turmoil that's going on. There's so, so many things that happen in our lives that I just don't even think that you need to even be worrying about how your house is. Just put it in maintenance mode, do the best you can, and that's enough. So I really want you to understand that while I'm constantly sharing tips and ideas for organizing and I love organizing, I don't think it should always be the top priority. And if you're in a season where it needs to take a bit of a backseat, that's okay. I totally support you. I'm here for you. I'll help. I'll help you figure out how to kind of keep it in maintenance mode so you're not going totally crazy with like a, uh, you know, not being able to ever find anything without giving it too much priority. And when you're in a season where you're ready to take it on, I'm here for you to help, help you get some ideas and inspiration for becoming even more organized. One of the things that I have shared often on this channel, but I, I think it's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle is that I am not really good at keeping up with the day-to-day -day tidying tasks. Those don't come naturally to me. I'm not someone who always wants to follow like a uh, perfect routine or something like that. And so if you were to drop over at a random time, I would say 20% of the time you're gonna find the house spotless and you're gonna be like, oh wow, she's this amazing organizing blogger whose house is always spotless. About 20% of the time you're gonna be like, this is a hot mess, I am in shock. And like 50% of the time, it's going to be like, well, I mean, it looks kind of average. Like there's a few things not put away, but it's, it's reasonable. Like this is kind of how it is. And um, I will also say that in the last three to four years, I think we've trended toward um, kind of that hot mess um, more than I would like. And certainly we've lived out in the middle um, where it's not all put away a lot more than I would like. And I've had to learn to accept that. And I think the first time that I finally learned to just accept that, and when I say accept it, I mean, you're not going around beating yourself up and feeling bad and guilty all the time. Like, oh, I should be able to keep this house spotless. When you're doing that, even when you do clean, you're coming from this place of like negativity and like expectations that are just absolutely ridiculous. Like no one could do it. And the first time that I realized that is when I had, um, uh, almost two year old or just turned two year old, like an infant, like, you know, one or two month old. Um, and we had just moved. So we weren't even completely settled in. I didn't even know the lay of the land. I couldn't even figure out how to, you know, like I had to use my GPS when I had to go buy groceries, you know, that kind of situation. So there's a lot going on. My husband had started a new job. So he wasn't at home, you know, all the time or anything like that. So, uh, I was, I was figuring things out with like being a mom of two, which is a big transition, <laughs> um, because there's one of me and there's two of them. <laughs> um, and then, in addition to that, my business was just starting to really take off. Like, wow, it was growing and I needed to figure out, like I needed to get help and how to hire people and how do I keep up with like all the people who are messaging me and need me. And um, it was a little bit overwhelming. And it was in that season that I realized like I had a choice. Like I had a lot of things going on. I, I, I had my business and I had invested a lot in it. And, and it, 
to me, it was something that I really wanted to nourish and grow and I loved it. So I didn't really want to put it on the back burner. Of course, my kids were a priority and I'm not going to like put them on the back burner. So they have to stay a priority. And then the third thing was just kind of my general like uh, household care, like getting organized, getting everything, you know, perfectly labeled, um, having uh, elaborate meals and things like that, um, or even not elaborate, but even just like normal uh, meals, like that was another category. And I realized that the one that was going to go was just the house. Like it just wasn't going to be a priority. I simplified meals probably too far to like, be like, I am not, you know, spending my time cooking. I'm going to throw something in a crock pot. We can have crackers and cheese. That's a dinner. Um, we can have breakfast for dinner. <laughs> that works. Uh, so we simplified that. Um, I wasn't cleaning like all that often. Um, Things were not super put away. Like, you know, inside the closets, I would typically, um, when I moved somewhere, within like two or three weeks, like everything would have its like bin and perfect place and, and things were just kind of like set there. You know, like I didn't get them all organized and I realized like that was the choice I had. And, I, and once I realized I was consciously making that choice that I would like the house to take a back seat right now because I'm prioritizing my kids and my business. And so I, I can't do everything. At the time, I didn't even have uh, childcare help for a little while. So I was like, this, this is what I can do. Um, and I didn't want, I mean, self-care is another one that a lot of people put in there. And I mean, for self-care, I just mean, I don't even mean like bubble baths and like spas and things like that. I just mean like literally taking a shower and making sure you eat three meals a day and get some amount of sleep. Like you got to sleep more than two hours a night, you know? <laughs> um, I didn't want that to take a backseat either because then it makes it harder to be do any of these things well, my business, my family, anything like that. And so it was the house that took a back seat. And once I realized that I felt okay about it, I was like, and I didn't try to pretend like it wasn't. I think sometimes people didn't believe me. Um, although if you follow me on Instagram, I have tried to share sometimes like here, here's what it really looks like. Like it doesn't always look like this shelf behind me, um, especially the whole house. And so that was the first time I really realized that. And then, you know, um, Soon after that, I got some part-time childcare help. Um, I hired some more help in the business. Um, you know, the kids got a little bit older and a little bit less needy. And um, yeah, things got back in order. Uh, we're going along now. I can manage my family, my basic self-care, my business, and my house, which was great. Um, but then, as time goes on, and this is what I haven't talked about a whole lot, my health started to decline greatly. Um, meaning that um, the, the, my primary symptom is just abdominal pain. So I would just have like, but I mean, we're not talking like, oh, my stomach feels a little upset or I feel a little bit of pressure. I mean, we're talking like pain, like I am in pain and like I have to lie down with a heating pad and take some Tylenol and take some ibuprofen and see if I can get through this. Um, but this was happening sometimes every single day for weeks or months on end. And the other thing that, would, that will happen with this is that, and I think this is what I did not understand before I had my own chronic illness, is that sometimes you kind of have to function through the pain. Like this is not like a, a stomach bug or even a pregnancy that you're gonna like get through and you're gonna get to a point where you feel better. This is like, this is life now. Like, for the foreseeable future, as far as I know, I'm going to have good days and bad days. And I'm going to have a lot of days where I'm in pain. So, so like if I had a stomach bug or something, I would put my life on hold until I recovered. Usually those are like a day or two. And so I would call someone in, you know, if, I, if to take the kids to activities, I, of course I wouldn't touch. I mean, I wouldn't be cooking. <laughs> like that would just be like, I'm not going to pass the thing on. I wouldn't be worried about all those things. I would, I would, I would take some time off. Um, but you can't do that when you have a chronic illness because this is life. So I had to learn how to keep going even when I was in pain. So I would do a lot of things like I would be taking the kids to school. I'd be going to their little field trips and, um, I would be doing some work. I would be filming videos. Some of them, I honestly, I can tell when I look at them, uh, what level of pain I was in when I was filming them. But, um, like I had to do these things. Like I showed up, but then what happens is so when I'm feeling good, the amount of energy it takes to show up here and um, film a video, let's say, like, like I'm doing now, um, I'm feeling great right now, by the way, um, is minimal. Like, I don't feel like it takes a lot of energy. It's not weighing on me. I'm not worrying about it. And when I hit stop on this video, I am now going to feel more energized than I did before because I love filming these. I love talking to you all. 
And so it, it gives me even more energy, like mentally and physically. But when I do it, when I'm in pain, I worry about it more. I know it's coming. I'm going to have to put on makeup. I'm going to have to put on a happy face and look like I'm great. Um, and this is true whether I'm filming or whether I'm going somewhere or whatever I'm doing. Um, and so that's going to just require so much more energy of me. And then when I'm done, instead of feeling re-energized, I feel depleted. And there's only so much energy I have to give. I mean, often it'll be five or six, you know, o'clock and I'm like, I'm done. I have given everything I've given. I've pushed through as much pain as I possibly can. I'm done. I just lay down, put the heating pad on. I mean, I often like turn on the sound machine, get all the lights off. And I'm just like, I'm done. Um, and so that's the time that I would normally be cooking dinner and that I would normally be doing organizing projects, cleaning, things like that. And in the few moments that I, if, when I am feeling good, you better bet I'm not going to be wasting my time cleaning. Um, I'm going to be spending that doing something that I enjoy, that lights me up, spending some quality time with my family. If I'm feeling good at kids, we're going to the park day. Like we're, we're bonding. <laughs> like I feel good. And when I do feel bad and I have to conserve my energy, I'm not giving it to the house. I'm giving it to my kids. I'm giving it to my business. I, I'm not giving it I mean, to the house. Um, so that's kind of how I feel <laughs> about that. Um, and I just want to let you know that like, if you're in the same boat, it's okay. Like I'm there too. And it can be really hard. And especially, I mean, I feel like, um, I have talked about the chronic illness a little bit at different times and I feel like I always get responses and questions and, um, just, just know that it is hard and it really is it just thinks like there isn't a, a good way, you know, a good, like, I wish I had something to, I wish I could tell you and I wish I could tell myself, don't worry, it's going to get better. Like you're going to feel better soon. But I don't know that. I don't know that about myself. I don't know that about you. Maybe it's true. And I hope it's true. Um, and, and you should work on that. I'm working on that as well. Like, please don't give up. But um, you just do come to a point where you have to learn to live with it. And I just think keeping your priorities in order is so helpful and just not comparing yourself. Like I can compare myself to all the other people on social media who are constantly taking their kids all these places and they're doing all these things and they're posting 25 stories a day and like all these things. That's, that's great. And I'm very happy for them, but I can't, I can't do that. Like I don't have that much energy to give. Um, and so, yeah, I just have to know that I can't do that. And I think the same is true for you. If you're experiencing anything like this is you may not have that much energy to give and that's okay. Um, yeah, just, just being okay with that, I think is really, really the thing because I could choose to beat myself up about it. Like I could choose to say, ah, oh, I cannot believe this is the third day in a row that I cannot get my clothes full in and like, or whatever. Um, and I could get really frustrated or I could see that like, it is a blessing that I have the power to choose to give my energy to the things that I really want to. And I can let organizing and the house take a back seat for a while. Um, and that's okay. And, and there'll be seasons where other things take a back seat and like the home takes the front seat and that's okay too. So I just don't want us to feel like we always have to have like this perfect home that we always have to be super duper organized. Um, or anything like that. Okay, and I do have something else I wanna say. I, would, I thought I was wrapping it up, but I just wanna say, if you are going through similar things, you're not alone. And I know I come on these videos and um, somebody was asking me this the other day, like someone I know in real life. Like, how do you, you always look so positive and happy. Like, how do you do that? And when you're like in pain half the time and you're actually, you know, not doing so fantastically. And what I want you to know is that you see these tiny, tiny pieces of my life. And last week, for example, this is when I was going to record these videos. I, I was in too much pain. I didn't do it. You know, um, I put it off till the next week. So you're not seeing everything. And I, you know, it's one thing to be upbeat and positive for an hour or so a week. Like that's what you really see of my time. But there are times when I'm just sobbing in the corner of my closet, just feeling like honestly a failure. Like why can't I do these things? Why can't I plan things with the kids. Why can't I take them on trips? Because, you know, I never know when I'm going to be in like too much pain and why, <laughs> like why all these things, why me, um, just frustration that happens to you. Like, so I just don't want you to think that that doesn't happen because it does. Um, 
I think it's really good. Like one of the things I've been teaching myself um, as a, like a side note, I don't know if you're familiar with the Enneagram at all, but I'm totally an Enneagram five and fives do not like to process feelings. <laughs> like they just kind of wish feelings did not exist. Um, so that's a challenge for me and something I'm working on. And so one of the things I've been learning is that like, you need to let your stress out and crying is good, not bad. Um, so I've been working on like, if I feel overwhelmed, if I feel like I'll just sit there and cry, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then give yourself the time to cry and then it's time to move on. Okay. So, and just admit this, this stinks. Like this isn't good. I don't like it. It's not fair. Whatever. It's fine. You know, it's, it's not cool. Like I'm not going to try to put a rose tinted, you know, look through rose tinted glasses at everything. Some things are just not fun, not good. Um, but I'm going to take what I do have and I'm going to make the most of that. And I'm going to look at like, like, I mean, I know people say this all the time and I feel like it's just like trite and oversaid, but I mean it like the whole, um, gratitude, counting your blessings and looking at things as a gift because like truly before I had this illness, I didn't know what a gift I had to be able to like freely plan things and not have in the back of my head. Am I even going to be able to do this? <laughs> you know, like I have gone on trips when I was in, ER, in the ER the, the day before thinking like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Somehow I manage, I don't know. Um, because to me, it's really important not to just stop my life. Um, if that's what you need to do, if you need to like cut back, I think that's great. I just, that psychologically is not what I need to do. So I, I kind of like the pushing through for some, for some, but there is a limit. Um, anyway, that was, that was a tangent, but realizing the blessing that it, that it is to be able to like plan things. And even now when I have a good day and like, I'm able to do something and feel great, like I, that is just such a gift. And I appreciate that gift so, so, so much more. Um, and there have been times even where, you know, I've been in a pretty rough season, you know, the, the last couple of weeks have been rough and I need to go do something. And I'm like, Oh, I just wish I could do this. You know, especially if it involves a lot of walking for whatever reason with mine, um, walking and, um, movement can make it a lot worse. And so I'm like, I really, really want to feel good. And then every once in a while I do, and it just feels like such a gift. Um, and so being able to look at it that way, um, I think is really important. And I want to say, like I, I've said, I see you, you know, if you are with me with like the whole chronic illness thing, um, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And if you have other questions, you know, I would love to answer. I can do follow-ups and things. Um, but also maybe that's not, maybe you're not dealing with it at all. Maybe you have wonderful health and you feel great, which is wonderful, but you might have something else. Like we all have something that is hard and difficult and a lot to manage. So I see you too. We're all here together and we're all here to help each other. So I hope that just gave you a little window and helped you feel less alone and realize that it's okay when organizing takes a back seat. And if you liked this, I think you'll like my video from last October when I actually got zero of my goals accomplished. Um, and so go ahead and watch that next. It's right over here.